All right, hello everyone. We are here with our part two of our beginner series. And in this series, we will be doing seven different poses, a little more advanced than the first round that we did, um, with a few different modifications for you as well. So as you continue to progress, you can get a little bit deeper into the stretch, a little bit stronger into the pose. So with our first pose, we will start with Trikonasana, triangle pose. Now with triangle pose, we will take our feet and just kind of start inching them outwards or you can take a step and then bringing your right foot pivoting your right foot out 90 degrees and the back foot here the left foot can go in just a little bit about 15 degrees or so you want a slight little bend in your right knee here and then placing the hands on the hips and then trying to square the hips out just a little bit and then reaching forward towards the right side going just a little bit until you feel a nice little stretch here. Activating the legs here, activating the core again, pressing that belly button into the spine, and then opening up here in the shoulders, trying to open, bringing that left shoulder up directly straight, and then you can gaze straight out in front of you, or if you feel, you can also look up towards the ceiling coming into our Trikonasana here. You can stay here, or as you continue to progress, you can actually slowly start to slide that right hand down to your thigh. And if you feel stable enough here, you can even just open it out in front of your thigh here. And that will really help to activate this side of your body, left side of your body. And if you feel even stronger, you can bring that left arm up towards the sky into a nice triangle and as you continue to advance as well the legs can come out a little bit further a little bit further a little bit further each time that you come into this pose and then you can bring your gaze up towards your left hand and if that starts straining on your neck you can go ahead and look straight ahead of you but looking up will give you a nice even bigger stretch and then coming out, bring that left arm back in, holding onto your hips, and then just walk that right foot back in. And then start to change sides. So bringing that left foot pointing out this way, that right foot coming in just at a little bit of an angle, keeping the hands on the hips, opening up the hip here, trying to move that right hip back a little bit, and then starting to extend your head forward over to the left side. From here, Keeping a little bend in that left knee, you can move your hands over to your thigh. You want to bring your gaze either out in front of you or up towards the ceiling. And if you feel you have the strength, bring that right arm up towards the sky. And again, trying to keep the shoulders here nice and open, so opening up the chest just a little bit more, really activating this side of the body. And if you keep feeling that you have the strength, walking the feet out a little bit further, each time getting a little bit stronger, going a little bit deeper. Remembering to breathe as you continue to stand in your pose. Now let's come out, slowly bringing the hands back to the hips, and then walking the feet back in. Very nice. Okay, now coming into our next pose, this is our balancing pose for the day and we will do our tree pose and this is a very modified version of the tree pose so first keeping the feet together bending the knees slightly and then gazing at one single point in front of you make sure it's something stable whatever you can stare at that will keep your balance there and then slowly bringing the hands to the hips shifting the weight over to the left foot starting to raise that right foot and then really grounding that weight into the left heel now. Slowly start to lift that right foot, bring the right foot to the left calf, and then engaging the buttocks, so squeezing the buttocks, making sure that the tailbone is tucked, engaging the core here for your balance, really pushing that belly button into the spine, and then rolling the shoulders back here. And you can take your right hand from here and actually try to bring your knee out just a little bit more. And then bring your hands to heart center, finding your balance. Remember to breathe. And from here, if you want something a little bit stronger, you want to play with your hand movements, you can start to, start to bring the hands up. Growing that tree, growing those branches. 
thinking of your favorite tree, be that tree. Finding the stability and the strength in your leg. Then slowly, let's come out of this pose, bringing the hands back to heart center, drop that right foot, shake out that left leg a little bit. And let's come into the other side. So first you want to find your single point that will help you keep your balance. Engage your buttocks here, engage your core. That will also help you keep your balance. Bend the knees, shift the weight onto your right foot. Slowly start to raise that left foot, bringing the sole of the left foot onto the right calf. And then slowly opening up that left knee, bringing the hands to heart center now. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Find that strength in that tree. And from here, if you would like, you can then grow out those branches, being a beautiful blossoming tree. Continue to breathe to keep your focus on that balance. And then slowly coming out of this pose, bring the hands back to heart center. Allow your foot to drop back down to the ground. Shake out that right foot. Beautiful job. Okay, next pose that we will go into is our forward fold. So spread the feet hips distance apart towards the front of your mat. And you may need to grab a prop for this, a chair, some blocks, um, something that will help give you support. So now slowly starting to bend the knees and then start hinging at the waist, folding forward over the waist, bringing the hands on down to your thighs first, finding your balance and support, and then one hand at a time, bringing it onto your block, onto the chair. We're walking down slowly here so that you can really get the balance of your legs. Now, keeping a, the bend in your knees, you can stay here if you'd like. If you have a little more flexibility, slowly start to drop a little more, just dropping the head, allow the head to drop. And then feeling yourself lifting from the hips up. You can keep the knees bent, but this, the hip movement is going up towards the sky here. And if you feel called, you can drop the hands down to the ground. Or if you really would like a deeper stretch, you can interlace your arms, crossing your arms, and allow yourself to just hang. Allow gravity to pull on your spine here, really breathing up the legs and then breathing down the spine. And if you feel, you can slowly just start straightening the legs little by little, going only as far as you can, breathing into the space behind your legs, into your hamstrings here. Taking another breath here. And then coming out of our pose, we'll bend the knees really graciously, bend them quite a lot, bring the hands back to your block or to your chair, Lifting your head, we wanna keep the head straight here so that the blood is starting to even out. Then place the hands onto the thighs, giving yourself a moment, walking your hands up your thighs slowly, starting to lift yourself up, keeping the head down until the last moment so that the blood doesn't just jump all the way back out of your brain into your body. And standing up nice, straight and tall. Very nice. Okay, now coming into our cat-cow stretch. This really good movement for the spine. So coming back down, bending your knees, bringing your hands back to your thighs, walking them onto the block to be able to lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Come onto your knees now. Now from here, you can fold your mat over, getting more cushioning, or if you have a blanket or a cushion handy, you can bring it underneath your knees whichever way you like. This will just give you some extra support for your knees. Now we wanna make sure that the knees are underneath the hips here, the wrists are underneath the shoulders. And to begin, you inhale, lifting the head up, dropping the belly and lifting the hips. And then as you exhale, you curve the spine, tucking that tailbone, bringing the chin into the chest. Inhale again, lifting the head, dropping that belly, lifting the hips up. Exhale, curving the spine, dropping the tailbone, tucking that chin in. And just continue this at your own pace, moving with your breath. Slowly, cautiously, feeling into your spine. This is great for the spine, opening and closing of that vertebrae. 
right? Creating space, allowing the joints to move. Let's do one more round. Inhaling, dropping that belly, lifting that head, gazing out in front of you. Exhale, tucking in the chin, curving the spine, and then coming back into your neutral position. Neutral is the spine is flat again. Very nice. And from here, we're going to come into our next pose, our head to knee pose. So we'll need to get onto our buttocks. So sit over to one side, bring your legs around towards the front of the mat. Sitting up nice and tall. So last series, we did the Dandasana that was sitting straight up nice and tall. So similar to that, and then bringing one foot in, so the left foot in here to the inner right thigh. Now, you can take a block or a pillow if you need, placing it underneath your knee here for extra support. Now, coming into the stretch here, you want to bring your arms up towards the sky, and this will help you to raise your spine. And then we're gonna shift and twist the spine just a little bit so that you're facing your knee. And from this space, start to lower your chest down, keeping the gaze in front of you. And then whenever you feel you have a deep enough stretch, just placing your hands on your thigh or on your shin, however far as you can go. Now the point of this is not to curve the spine, but to keep the spine straight here. I'm gonna roll the shoulders back just a little bit, keeping the gaze in front of us. And as you inhale, really try to straighten and lift the spine. And then as you exhale, lower a little bit more. So inhaling, straightening and lengthening, exhaling, lowering a little bit more. And each time you do this, you'll find a little bit, just micro movements of, ooh, I can go a little bit further, I can go a little bit further. To go a little even further, we'll tuck the belly into the spine, creating a hollow cave so that you can stretch even further. Breathe here for a few moments. And then coming out, you'll just walk your hands up your shin, supporting yourself up as you come sit back up and then coming into the other side so we'll straighten that left leg out bend that right foot bringing the right sole into the left inner thigh using your pillow or your block for support again shifting your um, chest to face your knee here raising the arms to find that extra length in your spine feel like there's a string on the top of your head pulling it up, and then you start shifting your chest down to your knee. And again, each inhale, you're lengthening the spine here. Each exhale, you're lowering a little bit more, remembering to keep the shoulders back. Inhale, lifting the spine, lengthening that spine. Exhale, going a little bit lower. And again, tucking that belly into your spine to really hollow that space out. Taking another breath here, and then slowly walking your hands up your shins, straightening those arms just to support yourself back up. Very nicely done. Extending that leg, maybe giving yourself a little wiggle, loosen everything up. Very nice. Now, coming into our next pose. This will be our back bend for this series, and we will be doing bridge pose. So let's scooch ourselves forward so that we can lower it on down to our back, first to our elbows, and then rolling ourselves all the way down. Walk the soles of the feet in so that you can touch your heels with your fingertips. Okay, and then you can imagine that you have a block between your knees here, or you can take a block and place it between your knees. Make sure to squeeze it nice and tight. And that will help activate the hamstrings here. And then taking a deep breath, Let's move the hips back and forth, just moving and feeling this type of back and forth, tucking of the tailbone. And then coming back to stillness, on an inhale, lift the hips just a few centimeters off the ground. Feeling that activation in the thighs, and then exhale, bring the hips back down. Inhale, bring the hips back up a little bit higher this time. Engaging those glutes, squeezing onto that block. Using your hands for support. You can press your hands into the ground. 
and then exhale, bring the hips back down. Let's do this one last time. Inhale, lift the hips up a little bit higher. Maybe see if you can make a straight line here, really activating the glutes, activating the core here, pressing your feet and your hands down firmly into the floor. Take a breath, breathe into the space, breathe into your chest here. And then slowly lower yourself on down. You can remove the block from your knees. And then you just go ahead and windshield wiper the knees from side to side. This will help to release any tension that has happened in the lower back. Very nice. And this will lead us straight into our last pose here, which is ankle over knee, or also known as eye of the needle. So staying from where we were, bring that right foot over to the left thigh. Take the right hand, thread it through that hole that you've just created, and interlace your hands behind that left thigh. And you want to go as high up into the knee crease as you can. This will give you a little bit more leverage now. And then slowly starting to pull in. You want to make sure that the tailbone here stays flat on the ground. We're not pulling ourselves all the way up. Then you also can use your right elbow to help open up that right knee. So pressing that elbow into the knee as you squeeze your left foot in. Keeping the feet flexed really helps to activate the legs opening up in our hips here and if you want to go a little bit deeper pulling in tuck that belly button back into the spine create that hollow space for your legs to be able to come in a little bit further take a few moments here feel free to close your eyes as you continue this breath breathing deeply with each exhale feel more tension just releasing out from your system and slowly releasing Release the hands, let that left foot back onto the ground, open up that right foot back to the ground, and let's switch sides. Bring the left foot over to the right side, open that knee out towards the left, bring the arms around the right thigh, bring that right knee in towards your chest. Again, making sure not to lift the sacrum, but to keep that tailbone on the ground as much as you can. Taking that left elbow, opening up that left knee, and then flexing the feet. Breathe into this space. Allow your chest to relax. Allow the shoulders to be flat on the ground. Tuck that belly button into the spine, down into the ground. Pull that right knee in just a little bit further. Take one more breath here. And then slowly releasing the hands, let that right foot down to the ground. Extend that left foot back down to the ground. Let's windshield wiper the legs one more time, releasing any tension that's left over in that lower back. And then extending the legs all the way out. Legs nice and wide, flip the palms up. Opening up the chest here, maybe if you'd like, tuck the shoulder blades underneath you just a little bit, opening up the chest here. Breathing into your heart space, letting yourself melt, letting all the tensions fade away, letting your body integrate all the movements that you just did, all the poses that you just had, the flexibility, the strength, and the openness. Stay here for as long as you need, allowing yourself to rest. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time.